little bit of a breeze. <clears throat> yeah, no. <laughs> dead ear. Um, but it's feeling better anyway. It's not working too good, but it feels better. Anyway, um, so there's some guy called BK, some incomprehensible number, did some kind of video saying anti-nailism creates some sort of paradox, which I really didn't really didn't fully understand this video. He seems supportive of the idea of uh, ethelism and the general conclusion that life is too stupid to justify its perpetuation. Um, but, um, you know, he thought there was some sort of problem, an implementation or something. Uh, and I don't see really the problem. Uh, the first point to be made is that, again, it's a minority of people that have most of the children. So most children come out of a very limited number of women um, in terms of general population. And uh, clearly, most societies subsidize child production. I mean, heavily subsidize it. So if you take away the subsidies, um, you'll take away probably a lot of the recreational child production. The people who do it just for the style of it, they just want a couple of stylish little brats to uh, you know, complete their image of being human. <laughs> you know. um, so yeah, so they'll, that'll probably get you into a declining population pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, off to the races, so to speak. I mean, the, the idea that, that the truth is, is that you do have to have three or more kids, or 2.1 or 2.2 or whatever the number is. But in practical matter, you know, you're going to have a lot of, uh, th those numbers are going to go higher and higher as more and more people uh, choose not to have children. And uh, so then the number to sustain uh, population itself, not just to replicate yourself, um, would have to go higher. Um, but, um, yeah, the bottom line is, is there's the, the Adam and Eve syndrome would always exist. There's always this possibility that you just got two people left and they start the whole thing all over again. So there's a point where the vast majority would have to tell the small minority that, uh, you know, we'll put you in a zoo if you can't behave. You know, we'll do what we have to do, but... Yeah, we're, we've decided that this isn't a game worth playing. We don't have the, we're not going to be building the social structures necessary to maintain a world for your children. And uh, it's a, a virus we're not going to let loose. So whether you like it or not, you're going to be vaccinated against it. If you can't do the right thing uh, by request, then they'll be required to do the right thing by other mechanisms. And they don't have to be absolutely draconian. But, uh, you know, they could be as simple as just taking any kids they have away. Um, and, you know, frankly, well, I don't want to get into the, you know, because people just react badly to everything. But, um, you know, there's not that big a deal, you know, <laughs> of uh, a fifth trimester. <laughs> you know, abortion isn't that bad an idea. The sixth, seventh, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, the thing isn't that um, conscious. Uh, and it certainly could be um, gracefully euthanized if that's the necessity uh, without any crisis. I mean, when you think about how many human babies died in all of our history, you know, the number, the attrition numbers were so high. And, uh, you know, the mothers who died, you know, hemorrhaging to death. Uh, for people that worry about uh, euthanizing a few um, uh, you know, whatever, <laughs> external fetuses, that's all the newborn is, um, isn't all that um, horrific. But anyway, I don't want to get into that, because again, people just react to everything emotionally rather than rationally. So, I don't see a real problem. Uh, I guess the other subject that was sort of on my mind was, you know, I didn't really get that the skeptical heretic really was just doing the why don't you kill yourself thing. I mean, it just seems like I was expecting more of an argument than that. And it's just so, like, how would you, have, you know, if everybody, I mean, for him not to realize that you can't win a war if your soldiers all kill themselves. It's just so stupid. Um, you know, especially this kind of battle where 
if you're fighting over other people's behavior and the consequence of their behavior, you certainly can't afford to take yourself out of that fight. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Killing yourself is a useless protest, um, and it's a, um, you know, it certainly doesn't solve the problem. And I don't even think it's a, a recognition of the real problem anyway. I mean, one could certainly argue that uh, my current existence is not horrific. Um, I wouldn't say that it's purposeful or useful, if it, usefully efficient in terms of that real-world consequence of the fact that other people are exploited to maintain it. But I'm just saying, as lives go, it doesn't have any emerent uh, immediate need to be um, put out of its misery kind of thing. It's not that dark. But there certainly are lives that are. And that's the point of anti-natalism, isn't so much getting the lucky card. Um, I've been very lucky. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's getting the unlucky card. So it's like he certainly doesn't recognize the different arguments to be made. Uh, I sort of tried to separate them out. Uh, you know, there's the Benatar asymmetry argument, which just recognizes the fact that all positive value in terms of appreciating life is projected value, uh, not um, something necessary. And so the prevention of the harm eliminated can clearly outweighs the projection of necessity, um, the projection of a, a party not gone to and not desired. I mean, you take away the desire, you take away the need. It is kind of obvious. So the need doesn't survive um, the mortal needing. It doesn't exist in the world. It exists in the being. I guess it's a good way of looking at the whole value equation too. The, the distinction between the value you create by experiencing, by being alive, by being vulnerable, and the value you project in terms of opinions of what has value, uh, perceptions of value. And uh, I've tried to get to that before. I don't know with what amount of success, but I mean, people sort of have to realize that their, their understanding that life needs to exist, that it's a good idea that it exists, is a projected value. It's not a self-evident value. It's not in the world itself in any kind of logical way where you could uh, reveal it. You have to contrive it out of a, a whole pattern of thinking that allows you to see purpose in creating um, the art appreciator and then creating the artist. You know, creating the hungry person and then creating the cook. You have to see purpose in this idea of uh, circular justification. You know, you have a, um, uh, you know, self-fulfilling, self, -fulfilling, self uh, perpetual uh, justifying engine in a way, a desire machine. And uh, the fact is there is no value without the desirer, without the, the hungry, it isn't anything <laughs> useful, functional. But, and we can, I've used the metaphors to kind of reveal that, the analogies to the fact that we don't lament, lament the 10 billion other people that could exist if we all just moved over a little bit, made room for them, and lived kind of a cramped life. We could have billions of more people on Earth. And uh, why don't we miss those missing people? Why don't we lament the tragedy of their absence? Uh, because, we, <laughs> because we know it's not a tragedy. We know they'd just be an inconvenience and a pain in the ass. Because that's basically what people turn out to be. It's an inconvenience and a pain in the ass, uh, generally speaking. And that we have done, been there and done this all a zillion times before. Uh, and so again, they're... Their, their investment into the future is created by not only their psychology of connecting themselves 
to the biology and saying I am the biology, I am life, and uh, probably also just the trend. You know, they they have nephews or nieces or their own children invested in the game, and therefore must project value in the game play. Uh, anyway, I didn't want to get on the. Well, I didn't really care where this one video went, you know. Um, but yeah, these are real discussions, not this, this bogus argument that it's about um, killing yourself uh, or that solving a problem. The issue is procreation. The subject is, should people play God and have children? Should they have less restrictions on that behavior than they have on all these other kinds of behaviors? Uh, you know, why do you need a license to drive, and, but you don't need a license to play God? <laughs> you know, to tell another living being it wants to call you mummy or daddy. Why do you have the arrogant right to do that? Why shouldn't you uh, meet some sort of minimum standards to apply for the job of imposer, life creator? I mean, if you're going to be Dr. Frankenstein, yeah, maybe you should go to some kind of medical school. Maybe you should know a little bit about what the fuck you're doing. Have some hope of raising a civilized child. And we see in the world, the real world, that most kids are born to ignorance and stupidity. And that's where they stay. Uh, stupid is as stupid raises their kids to be. I mean, it just, it's a, a shocking horror that we allow that to take place. That you actually have to molest your kid, or starve it, or do something outrageously horrible for society to pass any judgment, to impose, uh, you know, any kind of standards on your conduct as a parent. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't demand much from these gods that live among us. Uh, and it's pretty pitiful. Uh, if we had any, if, if again, another one of our projected values or stated values, that child has properties and the properties are vulnerability and preciousness, that they're precious. <laughs> yeah, I don't, they're not treated as if they are. Uh, you know, they're not uh, maturated. Uh, honestly, and uh, um, yeah, I don't know, in their best interest is what I want to say, something like that anyway, to get the most out of them, to help them actualize their potential. Uh, but that takes uh, some cleverness, it takes some cleverness to uh, mold the human being, and most people aren't nearly up to that task. Uh, so it's all part of the fraud, too, and all part of the reason why, if we applied a few of these standards, if we required people to measure up and uh, required them to pay the full price of their recreational activity, and that's all it is, it's a need they have. I don't need them to have children, <laughs> that's for sure. I see no need for the creation of their children, so I certainly shouldn't be contributing to it. I uh, shouldn't be subsidizing it. Funny how the skeptical heretic didn't bring that up as one of the blights of being alive is that you have to, as being part of the system, is that you are subsidizing the creation of poverty, the creation of living beings who will suffer and die. That you're obligated by the structure of the system to, in effect, um, fuel that fire, pour gasoline on that, uh, you know, uh, match, and, uh, you know, that's a certain evil, <laughs> yeah, uh, so what else can I call a related subject, but clearly there's lots of ways of unraveling, of decommissioning, that's a good word, decommissioning life on earth, you know, mothballing it. You can, you know, slowly bits go through the procedure, wash it down, 
stock it with the, the last bits of vital bits. You know, send some records out into space <laughs> explaining who we are and what we were and uh, how it all didn't really kick ass after all. <laughs> it really was no fucking point. Uh, so, um, you know, that's, uh, if you're chasing need, you're chasing nothing. Uh, the only purpose your intelligence is going to have in the end is to uh, tell you bedtime stories. You know, to entertain the little silly gooey parts. There is no intelligent mission statement here. Um, you know, an intelligent in terms of a, a place to get to. Intelligence is just feed the hunger. Come up with a new recipe. A new, a new ingredient for the yummy pie that the human race has to always have its face in. And uh, there is nowhere to boldly go outside of that confinement of just pleasing a need machine, a, a sensitive uh, monster. <laughs> that's, you know, uh, that's all there is. So anyway, uh, enough of a video, I think. Yeah, what are we gonna do? So there's all these little angles to the to the story of what it is to be alive and human. There's little little stuff. I mean, the big picture is consumption, reproduction, cannibalism, addiction. The big picture, the hard story, is evolving, uh, replication for the sake of replication, and the fact that uh, you have to create the need first. Because without it, there's no need we can serve. We can only serve the needs of our own creation. Creation in our own perception. There's no real need in the world. There's no mess to clean up, but the mess we make. Stunningly truthful words. <sighs> so anyway. Kind of breezy and cool, but the pool is still not bad. So... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the robot seems stuck. Uh, I hope it's not permanently stuck. Did a good job, though. Ah, there he goes. He's trying. Oh, he's full. That's it. He's got a full belly. Can't get up the wall when he's full. Anyway, until next time. And such is a fourth and whatnot.